President Biden today said climate change is driving this increased threat from wildfires. Look at the heat on the West Coast and the East Coast. What did I hear? Um, uh, Portland, Oregon on Monday, 116 degrees. And in Vancouver, British Columbia, just, just uh, not that far north. Well, okay, it's in a different country. But the temperature hit 118, the hottest ever recorded in Canada this past week or two days ago. Anyway, Biden announced a new federal response plan during a meeting with governors from Western states facing the, the, these heat waves only, I, I, I don't know why they're called heat waves. This is, this is the future and it's here. We've been warned and warned and warned about this and we've done nothing, 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 nothing of any consequence or at least the consequence to the degree necessary to fight back against global warming. He, uh, at this White House meeting today, talking about the heat wave, he said, quote, right now we have to act and act fast. We're late in the game here. The truth is we're playing catch up. This is an area that has been under-resourced, but that's going to change if we have anything to do with it. Um, he added, we can't cut corners when it comes to managing our wildfires or supporting our firefighters, end quote. But do you remember, I remember, during the Bush years when the, the, the budget, thanks to the Christian fascists, the Republicans, the budget for the National Forest Service, for just this sort of thing, maintaining the National Forest in, in a manner that would at least reduce the possibility of these raging fires and the budget was just decimated. The money was taken away and the Forest Service at the time, back around 2001, two, three, four, the Forest Service was screaming, you can't do this. But you remember the Department of the Interior at the time was headed by somebody who hated America, who hated the wide open spaces and, and who hated the idea that certain parts of the country should be kept pristine and development free. My God, the things we have set ourselves up for. The meeting that Biden called is happening as the Western United States and Western Canada are boiling under this extreme heat. It's put millions of Americans and Canadians in danger of heat-related health issues. Portland, Oregon, set the highest ever recorded temperature three days in a row, topping out at 116 degrees Fahrenheit on Monday. Seattle, 108 degrees, the hottest it's ever been. The governors that met were the Democratic governors from Oregon, California, New Mexico, Colorado, and Nevada, along with two Republican governors, Wyoming and Utah. And what, what Biden uh, added is this, quote, climate change is driving the dangerous confluence of extreme heat and prolonged drought. We are seeing wildfires of greater intensity that move with more speed and last well beyond traditional months, traditional months of the fire season, end quote. Well, not only that, Mr. President, but they start earlier. And Biden noted that the wildfire season, so-called, is already 
way ahead of last season in terms of the number of large fires. And last, if you remember, last season was a horrifying record. How many firefighters died? How many people died? Remember the Paradise Fire in California? That was last year, wasn't it? So, Biden announced some new efforts to ensure that federal firefighters are, are, are paid decently, that they don't make less than $15 an hour this year. That's what this has come down to. Permanent federal firefighters, according to this, working on the front lines, paid at up to a GS9 level, will receive up to a 10% retention incentive and temporary workers who commit to continue this season would receive a $1,000 award this year. Biden said in, in, in making this announcement, he said, quote, last week I learned that some of our federal firefighters are being paid less than $13 an hour. Come on, man, that's acceptable, end quote. And he added that he believed $15 an hour was still not enough. But the Christian fascists are not going to authorize that. Biden's going to have to do it by executive order. Ah, oh, I don't know. Like I mentioned last year, marked the worst wildfire season in California state history. And the scientists... The climatologists, the experts, blamed it on the climate crisis. But the Christian fascists are not going to listen, are they? No, they're not. So these so-called heat waves and the so-called heat domes aren't necessarily rare. But this recent weather catastrophe that's been burning the Pacific, Pacific Northwest doesn't have any, in, any precedent in at least the last 40 years of record-keeping. Um, according to New York Times, to understand the magnitude of the departure from historical norms, try to visualize it. There was a map in, in, in the Times that reflected temperatures since 1979. And it shows the extent of the areas experiencing extreme temperatures in the past week. And you can follow this. You can follow global warming and the, these areas where this excessive heat has taken hold. But Vancouver, British Columbia... Astonishing. There's a village in British Columbia, Lytton, I believe it is, Lytton or Lytton. It reached nearly 116 degrees. And that was on uh, Monday or on, on Saturday. And that was a record, the highest in Canadian history until Monday. And then the same town registered 118 degrees Fahrenheit. And in Seattle, there have only been two days in the last 50 years with temperatures in the tri triple digits. Twice in 50 years. And now it's happening almost on a daily basis. Oh, my God. So there you have it. The Malloy podcast for today. I, it, it just nothing but ugliness, tragedy, fear. Why don't we listen? Why don't we pay attention to the scientists and tell the religious crazy people to just shut up? Go, go hide in your, your churches and mosques and temples and, and do your bullshit, but, but stay out of governance. Just stay out of it. You don't have any business in governance on any level. Just get out. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. 
But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com. And never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.